grazer behind the platform where we are. Yep. Oh, great. Thanks. We are behind the platform, too. <clears throat> so I guess, yeah, once uh, she gives us the go ahead, we'll just start. We'll just start. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi everyone, welcome to world famous Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park, Alaska. It's one of the best places in the world to watch brown bears fishing for salmon. My name is Mike Fitz with explore.org. I'm happy to be standing on the wildlife viewing platform with my co-host for this play-by-play -play broadcast, a park ranger, Naomi Fo. And Naomi, uh, looks like it's gonna be a fun evening at the falls. So yeah, yeah. Glad, glad you're out here helping us uh, enjoy the bears. Oh, this is great. My favorite part of my job is doing these play-by-plays when you're here, Mike, and um, some of the bears are accommodating us tonight. Yes, last Thursday, uh, so eight days ago now, it was um, pretty slow at the waterfall. We only had basically water to talk about. We didn't see salmon jumping. Yesterday, we did a broadcast, Ranger Felicia and myself, uh, we had bears moving in and out, interacting with each other, uh, and we're, we've been seeing some fishing success uh, so far today. So it's about 6 p.m. Alaska time. Uh, we're glad that you're watching no matter where you happen to be around the world. And again, this is live footage from Brooks Falls. So we don't really know what we're going to see, but we know we're going to talk about bears and salmon along the way. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's get to it. Maybe, Naomi, we can um, introduce some of our um, major uh, characters that we're looking right uh, that are yeah. right in front of the platform. Well, um, right below us, if you have that shot, Mike, we've got um, 128 Grazer, who is um, eyeing 856, who is in the, the area we call the jacuzzi, which is uh, an eddy below the falls. And um, th we have seen salmon around here, so probably worth his weight. And we have downriver, um, 151 Walker, who just caught a salmon. So, yeah, good start. Yeah, so I, I guess we'll zoom in. We'll take a look at uh, Walker here. And one of the things that Ranger Felicia and I talked about yesterday is how bears are opportunists. Uh, and, you know, they like, each, each bear has its own preferred fishing spots, but they'll, they'll, they're adaptable. They'll take opportunity elsewhere when they can, where they can find it. So 151, he will fish in the far pool at Brooks Falls, but one of his big rivals is up here right now. And early in the salmon run off in the bears, uh, especially the, the really dominant bears like 856, aren't as tolerant of uh, other big males in his vicinity. So Walker taking his uh, chances in the, the riffles, but he, he can make a living down there. Yeah, I, I've always thought Walker is um, quite clever that way in that you know, in the beginning of the season, he's not the biggest bear in the world. And he stays down there and he can get really fat. And then later in the season when he's bigger, he can uh, compete up there. Um, and uh, 856 is, again, is trying to establish himself. So um, he's being a little pushy these days. Yeah, I think there's three things that really determine where bears fishes. It's experience and what it knows. Uh, and what it's willing to try. So yeah, learning and experience is one factor. It's uh, 
the, the presence of salmon is another. So they're going to go to certain places depending on how many salmon are available. And then the other one is competition, what, if they can have access to those fishing spots. 151, he's a big guy. So, you know, there aren't too many bears that can really uh, intimidate him. But one of those bears that can actually do that is in the jacuzzi right now. And this bear does not have to worry about anybody else for the moment displacing him. Our big guy here, number 856. Kind of large blonde ears for uh, a male of his size. He's a big guy. He's, you know, he's one of those, one of those bears right now that's pushing, you know, 900, 1,000 pounds in midsummer. Uh, loves to fish the jacuzzi. Sometimes we'll see him a little bit farther uh, across the waterfall, but this is really his preferred spot. And one thing to note about 856 is that he is so tall. He often doesn't look as fat as 747 when we think of as very fat, but he's an enormous bear. He is. He's so tall. He's really long. He's quite agile, too. I mean, he's good at fighting. I said that yesterday. When, when a, a bear gets in a fight with him, they, they tend to lose and they tend not to try again. So he's been dominant for a long, long time. He's an amazing animal. Uh, yeah, and it, we, you know, the, the hierarchy at Brooks River can change year to year, moment to moment, essentially, depending on what bears are around. But 856 has reigned at or near the top since 2011. So he's a, you're looking for success in the, uh, as a male brown bear, this is it. This is, this is peak performance, folks, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, and, and he's shown it this year. He looks in really good shape this year. Um, yeah, he's, he's been great, great to watch. Um, you know, a couple years ago, maybe we thought he wasn't feeling quite up to snuff. He's maybe walking a little slower, but he looks great this year. The other interesting thing is we see Grazer right below us, and she doesn't usually sit below the platform waiting but that again five sixes presence and dominance she's not going to go near him she's not going to go near the lip right now which is a good spot for her and she just caught a fish before we started today in the jacuzzi maybe just a few minutes beforehand she might have gone back If I did to occupy, I'm not, I'm not my perspective right now. There she is. So she might go down to the ripples because uh, that location successfully uh, in the past and also this year. She really is a very successful fisher no matter what time in the season she finds those good spots. I think she's the best angler on the river. She can fish virtually anywhere. She can fish on the lip, in the far pool, in the jacuzzi. She can fish in the ripples. She can chase fish down, which a lot of the big guys can't do. Like 747 can run fast for a short distance, but downstream chasing a school of salmon. But Grazer can do that. She's a big girl. She's one of the larger females we have around here. But uh, yeah, again, it, it, when you see uh, next to one of those large, it's still a tremendous difference in size. Females weigh probably like one half as much. Yeah, or she... two thirds as much, I should say. Is, as an adult male. I mean, she she looks up to me when she stands up and he stands up there confronting each other. She looks like maybe she's one third the size of 856. But as we know, she's a bear who can hold her own and really fish well. So yeah, she's coming into on the right hand side. She's coming into the water again. Uh, Walker just splashing there on the left, lunging for fish. Sometimes Walker avoids a grazer, which you don't see an adult male of that size doing a lot but he's had i think more than one in run in with her so yeah. in in some a lot of instances you can say that grazer's more dominant than 151. yeah she when she has cubs she does not um tolerate his being near her at all and um he doesn't forget that another bear on the uh, left hand uh left bank of the river Grazer, again, moving up right now, direct approach to where Walker is, and look at him just backing off. So, Grazer, she wants that spot. She's taking it right now, again, from a big adult male. So, yeah. you know, you don't typically see females uh, attempt to displace adult males, that, especially the size of Walker, who's, you know, again, a 1,000-pound-plus bear in the fall. But 
Walker, you know, he backed off a little bit. His head is low. His ears are back. He's feeling pretty defensive there. Grazer, her ears are back a little bit, but uh, she is more focused on fish. And that's a clear displacement. So, yeah, yeah. I think Grazer is higher in the hierarchy than 151, which... Poor, poor 151. <laughs> he has so much ambition, but, you know, yeah. it's but hard to compete with it is, 128. You know, Grazer's an amazing bear. Again, bl very blonde ears, blonde body at this time of the year. She'll be really plump and round in the fall. A great bear to watch overall and get to know and i know she's a fan favorite for a lot of people who watch the bear cams she was born in 2005 she had that same coloration when i saw her as a two and a half year old in 2007. and there's another bear down there also i'm going to come in on something that um none of us can see but there was a bear that was approaching the falls look and um saw 856 and fought against it and it's gone behind the platform so maybe we'll be able to see that bear yeah. a little later. We'll be looking around. As we're talking, we're also looking left and right so we can have that perspective on what other bears are doing. Right now, downstream, again, you have a bit of a chain reaction happening. One, two, eight, displaced walker. Walker getting kicked out of the pool. It's moving downstream. That other bear that was moving upstream does not want to challenge walker for you know, just that little area that they happen to be in at the same place at the same time. They weren't really trying to fish there. It's just that they were nearby one another. So that other bear avoided 151. And it looks like, uh, yeah, that other bear that avoided um, 856 oh. is on the near bank uh, closer to us. This is number 83. Big adult male, older adult male. I think he was born in like 2000 and I don't know, three or so, you know, in the, in the aughts, early aughts at some point in time. So he's maybe equivalent to about the age of 856. We're not, ex uh, I'm not exactly sure. Can't remember off the top of my head. 83 though, looking pretty decent this year. Um, doesn't have like those big characteristic wounds that he often has right yeah. now. Yeah, usually when 883 comes back early in the season, he looks like he's been beaten up several times. He's got lots of scars, but he looks good. He just has like a shed pattern to me this year. Yeah. But he's gonna be careful around 856 for sure. And his claws are kind of whitish, not white white, I should say. They're just really pale. His mother had that as well. Uh, we think his mother is number 438, who was nicknamed Flo. She had uh, pearly white claws. And as he's matured, and he's going to, yeah, he's, he's doing a wide walk around the falls here. We're not, he's going to move out of our line. He's doing that, I think, for to avoid the presence of hot provoking 856's ire. And 856 seems pretty concentrated on fishing at the moment. So he's, but you know, he might try and prove a point. He thinks AB might get his fishing spot. Naomi, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the camera quickly here. Okay. So I hope everyone at home doesn't get seasick. But this is the back of the platform, number 83. It's just on the on the other side. Uh, there's a there's a deep gap in there, um, so there's physical separation from people in that spot. But on the, just to the right of where everybody is standing, essentially. Sorry for the butt shots. Uh, we'll go back to the river here in just a second. There's a little <laughs> walkway um, and stairs over on the right. But bears really don't pay attention to the uh, to us on the platform. We don't give them motivation to do that. Thankfully. And that's a uh, you know one of the important things to do while you're here at Brooks River is making sure that you're not motivating a bear to be curious about us or approach us for food. So no food on the platforms. Can't leave property unattended. So bears don't learn that, that we have play toys. And try not to fall. Have anything fall over the platform. So 83 right now coming back. Uh, to, we'll keep an eye on him. This he wants to go. He does look a lot like his mom at this age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he has, his mom was blonder overall, kind of like not, you know, maybe closer to grazer in coloration than anything else, but she had blonde what the time of the year, year was. So, 83 has that as well. So I'm curious about 83 because um, he had a brother, 868, and they had very different, I'm very curious about that since you know, they're brothers, they have the same mother, and general, you know, 
often we see mimic the, the fishing styles of their mother. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, they, they certainly do. They'll try fishing in the same ways that moths learn from other bears. We see that happening a lot because very few female bears will go into the jacuzzi with her and, and show their cubs, hey, this is a fishing spot. Right. But we'll see a lot of bears try to fish in the jacuzzi as, as spaces available. So I think over time, bears, again, they sort of just, they have these individual preferences, they differentiate, and, and they, they specialize in different places at, at the wall itself. 868, we haven't seen in years. He's uh, deceased. He happened to die in, uh, I think, 20, 2015 is the last time that we saw him. There was another brother from that, line, uh, from that litter that uh, 868 and number 83 belonged to. Not sure that they utilize this area anymore. That was a litter. Males frequently will go to other feeding grounds and mating grounds when the competition is too much. So uh, there, there are a number of male bear, young male bears we we lose track of. Yep, young young adult male sub adult males frequently dispersed from their mother's home range. Not always, because we do see. 83 is a good example of that. Um, male bears coming back to Brooks River, so they don't always disperse completely from their mother's home range. But it's much more common for a, a sub-adult male to, to do that than a sub -adult. Female bears often have overlapping home ranges with their, uh, with their daughters. And on Brooks River, too, granddaughters. Yes. One of the advantages of watching the yeah. bear cams, you can see if, generations of bears. What if we have any great grandmothers on the river? Hmm. I'm trying to think, I can't remember off the top of my what head. What about the two eight four seven zero eight? Maybe that's one possibility. Uh, seven zero eight Amelia. She's had several litters. Right. Uh, we don't see her mother around anymore, but yeah, two eighty four is the offspring of seven zero eight. Uh, and then 284 has had cubs that are probably getting a, close to yeah. uh, reproductive age, if not there already. I'm trying to stream the enemy, there's one on the bank on the ripples. I can't quite uh, yeah, tell. Yeah, I can't quite. There's, who there's that is a tree. from this distance. Maybe that bear will uh, brave the scene and come up here. Right now, yeah, just 856 at the, at the falls. So if you're joining us, a little bit late today. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike Fitz with Explore.org. I'm standing on the wildlife viewing platform at Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park, Alaska. And my co-host is uh, Katmai National Park Ranger Naomi Boak. And I'm zooming in right now, Naomi, on uh, on 856, who is a very skilled angler in that location. And he, he definitely, I mean, I, he looks like he's not doing anything but the energy it takes to stay put in that place. I mean, only, only the biggest bears can, can do that. Mike, you have actually been in what we call the jacuzzi. Yeah, it's very hard to stand there as a human without getting swept away by the water. But 856 is much more body mass than me, obviously. <laughs> so he's kind of to the bottom of the, of the river. Right in front of him, though, is a big, deep drop off. There's a big pool in there that's quite, quite deep. Um, much deeper than I expected uh, when I've explored that spot. There's on the ground. Doing it by feel, he's looking for, uh, you know, for fish to basically to bump into. Uh, so we'll see him react suddenly, very quickly, if that if that happens. Maybe he feels like a tail brush against him. That's the spot where Sam and I are going to jump out of the water to leap through the falls. So you know, energy expenditure. Um, how much energy, I mean, it looks like he's not spending a lot of energy to fish. I mean, how much energy is he using to stay put there? Is it an efficient way to fish? I think so. I don't think he's really expending much extra energy being there than he would be just <laughs> kind of up in, the, up in the landscape. A bear that big doesn't have to really worry about getting cold in the water. And I also think bears have some sort of, they must have some physiological adaptations to stay in cold water like this, because even cubs, after, like yearlings are, you know, they're not maybe not that big. They're maybe like, you know, as big as us, like 150, 200 pounds. And uh, 
and they they're they're in the water a lot especially in the fall when it could be like 45 degrees out and the water temperature is 45 degrees and they're just uh, eating fish of course all day but I I think they must have some sort of ability to stay warmer in the cold water so maybe they're burning a little bit of extra energy I don't think so for a big bear if he's out in the landscape walking around he's gonna get overheated pretty quickly they don't have really sweat glands like us they might lose they lose a lot of uh, heat through their the, their paw pads and, and they'll be really hot as well like a dog but we don't see them panting and drooling like a dog it's kind of like so I, I I don't think it, it costs him really extra heat in the water that's also where his dinner is right so I, do, do you see any fish down there I know there were some popping their heads out not at the moment. It's a good day to look down into the water, but I don't see any fish right now. They so, are coming, though, for those yeah. people who have been concerned about the salmon run. Um, yeah, a lot of variability in the salmon runs from year to year. This is part of the Bristol Bay uh, system of, of watersheds that's really home to the last great salmon run left on Earth. Sockeye salmon primarily in Brooks River, 99% of the, of the salmon that enter Brooks River are sockeyes. But there's other species of salmon that come a little bit later in the summer as well. And bears will try to target those if they have that opportunity. But almost all of the fish that they're catching and eating and all, all the, almost all the fish that spawn in Brooks River are sockeye salmon. Well, I mean, I suspect there's something out there because he's, A56 is hanging around. And the bears have been not staying in one place very long when there haven't been fish. A hallmark of a lot of the bears is patience. 856 doesn't seem to have a lot of patience for other bears, but he, he has patience for fishing. And you have to be good to get that big. You don't get big. <laughs> you don't get big like Grazer. You don't get big like 856 without being able to catch and eat a lot of food. We can always, you know, Naomi, contrast the behavior of uh, a confident and experienced and dominant bear like 856 with younger bears yes. that fish in the jacuzzi. Because we've been seeing some younger bears moving into here when it's uh, when there's been a vacancy in that fishing spot. Uh, they don't have to hold themselves still in the water, not quite yet. But all the, one of the other reasons they're moving around is they're like, is another guy, another big guy going to come? and kick me out of here do i have to be i have to i have to pay attention because i i don't want to get surprised by a bear like 856 who is is not shy about asserting his dominance over the bear i mean one of the really interesting things about watching the bears on this river is how they adjust to being so close to each other it, it speaks of the value of the salmon to them um and and so the young like you said the younger bears, the subadults, are they're looking around, or the smaller bears, they've got to be cautious, but they don't want to fight, they want to eat and get fat, and they've, they've really figured out what's them. So let's do, look downstream now to the ripples. About 100 yards downstream is where those bears are fishing, and if you're watching from some other place besides the United States, and you're like, what is a yard? Uh, they're probably about like 95 meters away or something like that. <clears throat> 83, maybe he, you know, I think he probably wants to try to, to fish in that vicinity. Grazer holds her ground. She doesn't avoid many bears. But neither one of these bears being aggressive towards one another right now. like they're trying to figure things out while looking for fish. Yeah, 83 is going to, you know, maybe look for an opportunity at another point in time, moving back down. There's also still that bear on the this side of the, of the river on the near bank. And again, I can't quite see who that might be through the trees. I'm not sure if our camera's going to pick it up very well or not. Yeah, I think he's just hidden behind some branches. Maybe right in the center of the view, but with, I think we're full of trees. Yeah. 
But we're, we're watching that one to see if he comes into the river. But that is a uh, certainly a subordinate bear compared to the others that we have in the river right now. Because again, if it was a very dominant bear like 856, maybe 47, he'll, they, he would be much more likely just to take his spot in the river. But last night, I, I was watching 856 in the jacuzzi. This was maybe somewhere around 8 p.m. or so, 7 p.m. 747 came to the, he was another large adult male. He came to the far side of the river, he just sat on the hill for like, it, maybe close to an hour because 856 was down here. And I don't think that, I don't, I don't think that 747 wanted to, again, provoke any sort of interaction with 856. That's interesting, you know, considering how they um, have traded places periodically in terms of the hierarchy. Um, but it certainly looks like 856 is, for the moment, more dominant. Yeah, based on the interactions that we saw between those two bears yesterday, it was clear that 856 was, was more dominant. Again, things can change. If 856 gets ill or injured, maybe 747 will sense a little bit of weakness there. That happened, you know, last year for some reason, 747 was more dominant at the end of the summer. And 856 was more dominant at the beginning of the summer. So we don't often see things flipping like that. So that's a storyline to watch as we continue through the year. How old is 856 now? He was a identified as a young adult in like 2006. So he's like five or six years old then. So I think he's, you know, he's in his early 20s at least. Not the oldest bear on the back of the Miami early enough that the bear camp and seen. The bear we can see right now, but you saw one of the elder moms Brooks River uh, earlier today. Yeah, I saw a uh, bear 482 as I was walking up here. Um, she was on the lower river, and if you were watching the lower river camps, I'm sure you saw her, um, and she has two really healthy looking yearlings. She is a beautiful bear, um, and they just, just look great. And when you were actually there, cubs were complaining. Um, I'm not sure they didn't want to swim, but more than likely they're hungry because there hasn't been much food for them other than grass. So I say they were wanting some of mom's milk and wondering why she was swimming. But it was really good to see her back and looking so healthy. Uh, a frequent question that is how old bears can live. And in the wild, I think the oldest brown bears ever documented were somewhere near like 35 years old. That's a pretty old bear. That's like more than a, that's like a hundred year old person, I, I estimate. I, I, just, I think every three years, or every, every human year is equivalent to three bear years. And that sort of makes sense when you think about when they become sexually mature, like, they, which is usually like at five, you know, calendar years. So that would be equivalent to about 15 mm -hmm. in people. And so their average lifespan can be around 20 years old. So that would be about 60. Uh, in a person so yeah when you're seeing like a bear that's up up near 30 years of age you're getting pretty close to like what would be the equivalent of a hundred year old person yeah and we've had a few of those grays are just hanging out in the riffles nose up in the air for bears and fish i assume If you watch, yeah, if you, when the cams, the bear cams zoom in, individual bear, one of the things to watch is how they're orienting their face. Not because, not just because they are looking around, but also so they're capturing different scents. Uh, they're, they're especially profound, and they have the ability to walk throughout and know not only that other bears were around, but probably how recently those other bears were around. Going into 
you know, I, I guess a, a, a place where people had gathered the night before. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, oh yeah, I know Naomi was here and I know... Uh, you Do know, I smell that bad? No, uh, not today, thankfully. Okay. I was going to say something, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wait till later, but I guess this is as good a time as any. Okay, um, all right. I'll, I'll shower tonight. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that. It'd be like, oh, yeah, oh you, you had a party and you... Why'd you invite my ex-girlfriend? Something like that. I mean, they would know. So, so it's really, it's really kind of amazing uh, what their experience might be like. I don't think, as a human, I can fathom that. Just how strong their sense of smell is. Right. Well, you know, if you have a dog, you know, they're smelling other dogs' pee all the time, and they can tell when that dog has been there. And um, but bears have a much stronger dog. So imagine that. Not awful. Uh, when they're walking along the riverbanks too, they'll they'll put this right up against leaves and twigs and branches, things that you wouldn't think would carry a lot of scent. But just a bare brushing against that can leave some odor behind. I was watching 747 yesterday, and he was doing that a lot. And sometimes they'll even put like, uh, you know, bits of vegetation that a bear has brushed against, uh, like in their mouth, right on the roof of their mouth. They have a, a vulnerable nasal gland there. They also have a, another organ, at least I know black bears do and brown bears probably do as well, that helps to, to communicate scent you know, directly to their brain. So it's just not uh, scent through their their nostrils that they're, um, uh, that they're gathering odors with. 856 submerging in the jacuzzi there because he, he must have felt a fish uh, bumping against him in that instance, but coming up unsuccessfully. We did see Grazer catch a fish in the jacuzzi just before 856 showed up, and it was a big one. And the gulls are beginning to hang out, which means that they're optimistic about the bears catching right. fish. Right. Bears facilitate other the ability of other animals, or the opportunity for other animals, to catch and eat uh, salmon. A gull doesn't have the the talons, the size, or the, the a specialized bill to really catch and, uh, and break through the skin of like a, of, of a large fish like a salmon. So they're really, they're, yeah, they're waiting to pick up any scraps that bears happen to leave behind. I mean, I think that one bear that we've been looking to come out on the bank, he hasn't quite emerged yet. But no, he's still there, maybe waiting. Maybe a little more vis before. Grazer's still down there in the in the, the ripples. I haven't seen her successful since we started the broadcast. She she caught one right before we started, however. So that other bear, just hanging out. And without my binoculars, I'm not going to be able to kind of uh, tell who it might be, just based on could, size. Yeah, could, could be, be Walker waiting. Could be. I thought he might have left on the on oh. the far side, but you know, bears swing around. We don't see everywhere that they happen to go. But not a not a particularly young bear here. Maybe a young adult just waiting for. Or we lost sight of eight three. Could be eight three hanging out there again too. So. Ah, the binoculars are coming out. Yeah, if you're ever coming to Brooks River, bring a pair of binoculars. The bears are often really close, but they really help me a lot. And I don't think we saw 907 last year. Uh, well, I wasn't here, but yeah. I thought I did. I remember. I mean, this bear has that 907 vibe, but I could be confusing them with another bear. So don't, at home, don't be like, Mike said 907 was here. Okay. And then everyone will be like, But Mike is never wrong. Confused. <laughs> Mike always gets the IDs right. I just don't tell people when I'm wrong. <laughs> I've been saying I don't know a lot about bear IDs right now. It's so hard to identify sub-adults at this point. Um, and, and bears change so yeah. much through the season. And when you start watching them, then you get used to oh yeah, there's this behavior and I recognize that scar and that shape of ear. But um, I say I don't know a lot about bear IDs. 
the bear camp fans help us out a lot with identifying bears, especially a lot of the young ones, because with enough people watching, uh, some people like to follow the stories of different individual bears. And while it's really, it, it's by these large adults like 856 or Grazer, you watch each one of these bears carefully. You can identify each one of them. It's just a matter of time of learning who is who happens to be who and their size and their mannerisms. So it's just not their physical appearance, but it's also their behaviors as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and some people like to watch, of course, certain bears and follow their stories so they get to know those bears well and be like, oh, I can always pick out, you know, 225, for instance, while other people will be like, oh, I can never, I, you know, identify that bear. Right. Like for me, um, 89 Backpack was the bear that got me started on the cams and I can always identify Backpack and he was here earlier today. He has um, this time in the season what I call pants. He's got, the, the lower part of his body is darker than the upper part of his body. Um, but yeah, and for me, behavior is really important in identifying bears. Um, I can say, well, yeah, that looks like such and such a bear, but when I know that that's where they fish or that's how they react to another bear, um, then it helps me identify that bear. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just not physical features, it's also behaviors as well. 856, really assertive, confident. Um, when he walks through the river, he almost doesn't, a lot of times he doesn't acknowledge other bears. If he knows that they're subordinate, he'll just kind of do what he wants to do. But uh, he has, for a big adult male, that's one of the things that I look for. He often, when he's walking around, will lick his lips frequently. Not a lot of bears will do that. He's not the only one, but he does it a lot. This time he almost has like a, like thinner hair right across his back that sometimes we can see when he's sitting in the jacuzzi because he, I think that's from him just marking trees a lot and rubbing his back on uh. trees. Yeah, I could notice that when I was standing at the riffles before, I saw that sort of dorsal stripe. His ears are also set back pretty far on his head, which is another way I identify him. And that's a way that you can identify full-grown adults, typically from younger bears. Because I was reading a book uh, just the other day by a, a bear rehabilitator and researcher named um, Ben Killam. This is like his first book. I think it was published somewhere around like 2002, 2003, something like that. And he, since he has a lot of experience with very young bears, he he says that uh, with black bears, they're only within like a few years of their life. Like some adults often have like really big poopy ears. Uh, so like Asics could have had those those years when he was a pretty young bear. And he's just sort of like grown into him. So his skull has gotten much bigger than he was when he was like a young bear. But yeah, if you see relatively small ears on a bear, that's a good indication that you're looking at a full grown adult. There could be exceptions to that. Like Grazer has really big ears. Right. Um, they they kind of stand pretty high on their heads. So sometimes you'd be like, oh, really? My, you know, <laughs> Grazer has really big ears. What about her? But on a, on a sub-adult bear, yeah, oftentimes their ears look disproportionately large. Yeah, no, I mean, that's something that I've noticed is the subadults having these giant ears. And, well, two bears that have some of the biggest ears around are 909 and 910, the, the, uh, the, the sisters. Right, and their mother had very prominent blonde ears. They're actually related to 128 Grazer. So Grazer is uh, 909 and 910's aunt uh, or cousin or something. It's <laughs> one of those uh, but uh, Grazer's mother was sister to bead Ah, uh, okay so so I guess they're cousins cousins is what it would be great well, lighting coming out right now we haven't had a lot of sunshine that looks like my boy it looks yeah. like backpack coming into the river yeah so just downstream of Grazer now bear we haven't seen yet in the broadcast today he's been on the river the last few days though this is a uh, number 89 backpack on the right hand side in the water now. Yeah, darker darker fur towards his hindquarters makes him somewhat easy to uh, see. He's a mature adult male. He was born in 2006. Good looking guy. He doesn't he doesn't really have a lot of scars or wounds. He seems to avoid a lot of those um, 
there's real intense conflicts, at least at the waterfall. We don't really see him. He'll stand his ground when he feels like it, uh, but he's not, not as um, assertive or as, as uh, aggressive as a bear like 856 or 747. No, and he used to play fight a lot with 151 and with 32, right? With 32 chunk. Um, but yeah, he doesn't, he tends to, play, you might say, play it a little safe for a big guy. Which is why he doesn't have many scars. I have to see a big scar on him. He's also another raised in the Bush River area by well-known female number 435 Polly. So again, this is an example of how not all adult males completely disperse outside of their mother's home. It would make sense if you're in back to Bush River because this is such a good place to find. But this isn't the only place in Katmai to fish for sand. The, the, the asterisk besides that, though, is in very late summer. In early summer, it's really the only place where bears can get salmon right now. There's really no other equivalent uh, stream or, or river where bears can fish for salmon at this moment in timing um, in sort of like the, uh, the Bristol Bay side of Katmai National Park. And then in very late summer, there are very, very few salmon runs uh, that are still active and uh, few places where salmon are spawning, except for at Brooks River. So in, into October, for instance, this is one of the, the last places where bears can catch salmon. So the bears have been roaming around, they've come and they've gone, so they're not retreating to other rivers, right, Mike? I don't think so right now. I think they're moving in and out of the forest, looking to see if salmon are here. They come in, they might check things out and be like, yeah, I don't, I don't sense <coughs> that any salmon are here right now, and then they'll maybe decide, oh, I'll, I'll come back in a few days. This is a, the time of the year, though, that you sh I think really should expect to see new bears arriving on the river every day. Yeah, well, that's, it has been happening, and it's been quite wonderful. You know, when you arrive here, I, I arrive in May, and I'm just waiting for the bears to come because we're not here for the cameras, we're here for the bears. We're standing right above the falls low camera. It is directly underneath us. We have a little bit of a delay in our, or a break in our action. I don't know if we'll be able to see the falls low cam from where we are. I'll point right down below. It's basically right on the ground or <laughs> almost right in the ground right below us. That little box on the corner of the, of the piling there is where the falls low cam is. Naomi, I'm really surprised that the falls low cam has survived. All yeah. these, when we installed it, I thought for sure it'd be like one of those things that a bear would just rip into within like two or three weeks. And they're curious about it sometimes, but they just leave it alone. Uh, yeah, I, w I wonder, well, it doesn't smell good to eat. Um, but yeah, every once in a while we have a bear nose in the low cam. I must say that um, the Falls High Cam is new this year, and the resolution is so wonderful. We, it, they can zoom all the way down river. It's, um, it's a real treat. Thank you, Explore. Right now I'm using a hand, uh, or a camcorder that's mounted on a monopod, so you can blame me for the shakiness in the, in the image and making me seasick at home. And I nudge him every once in a while just to... Well, I think we've certainly shown bears are patient tonight. I haven't seen a, uh, a bear catch a fish during the broadcast, but what, we're like 40 minutes in now, mm -hmm. somewhere around in there. And the bears are kind of largely in the same position. So 856 in the jacuzzi, downstream number 128, who is nicknamed Grazer. And then downstream of Grazer, number 89, who is nicknamed Backpack. He got his name, his nickname as a spring cub. He often would ride in the river when his mother was fishing on his mother's back. So that's how he got that, that nickname. When we talk about names, so 
Um, these names are kind of grandfathered in by rangers, right, Mike? They are. Honestly, I, I wish the rangers would assign more nicknames to bears because I know that helps some people remember nicknames. And I don't personally have a problem with nicknames as long as we're not stigmatizing the bears mm -hmm. with a nickname. So we wouldn't want to nickname a bear killer or, or jerker, you know, or something like that. Or fluffy. Uh, I, you know, nicknames that maybe are just people names or names that reflect a, a certain physical feature of the bears right? Uh, and help us, you know, maybe identify them that way or um, a, a, a nickname that helps us remind a, us of the story about that bear, like Backpack, for instance. Uh, but a lot of rangers right now are avoiding the use of, of nicknames. Publicly. Publicly, at least. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think, and I've written about this, you know, in the past, even for the park. I think it's just really careful not, we have to be really careful not to stigmatize the bears with nicknames and recognize that they are wild animals, no matter what we happen to call them, how well we think we happen to know them. Right. And not to anthropomorphize yeah. as well, yes. because, um, you know, they look fuzzy and very handsome, but you don't want to get up close. Getting a little bit of sunlight now at our backs. Again, a good time of the day to look for salmon, but we're not seeing any in the water right in front of us. Sometimes that's not uh, surprising. We're also not seeing salmon jumping though. So I think we haven't seen 856 really reacting to anything in the water much, or I guess much in the water that would indicate there's a lot of salmon fishing in, or is the pooling in that fishing spot. Yeah, I guess there was a small run just just before we started, we saw some mergansers chasing a fish. Um, Grazer caught one, Walker caught one, but I um, guess we have to wait for the, the next one. Be patient like a bear. But I must say the bears came back looking really healthy this year, so they can withstand the weight in ways that maybe they couldn't have years ago when the salmon runs were or smaller? Probably. They've had several good years of, of salmon runs in this area. So many bears are still carrying some fat reserves from the past year. And that's yeah, just really important um, for their springtime survival and early summer survival. So bears are, yeah, they're, maybe some of them are a little bit of ahead of the game just because they had a really good year last year. Like 747 is big and he's hungry, but he hasn't really, he's not really lacking any food. 856 turning out of the jacuzzi, licking his lips, looking downstream. Maybe a fish caught his attention. Maybe he caught a whiff of something that caught his attention, but right back at it. Yeah, he's looking around. There's some. You can see him licking his lips. There's Mike mentioned before. Let's see where he happens to go now that he's out of the water. He could easily just return to the jacuzzi again. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he decided to take a break. I wonder again if he caught a, a, the scent of something that grabbed his attention. Sometimes they stand up just to pee, too. You'll oh. see them, they come to the bank and just pee. But that didn't seem to be the case this time. No, it looked like he was looking around, smelling something. And he also just wanted to demonstrate what you were talking about, so. But you're a really tall bear, really large bear. Oh, right yeah. Oh. A merganser caught something. Yeah, you know, bears aren't the only predators here, so diving ducks like mergansers when swimming downstream right now. Common merganser, uh, a female here. Well, it's... 
beautiful evening to be here at the fall. We've had quite a rainy season. Oh, here comes 856 again. Yeah, just a real big, tall guy. He's one of the, the, as far as his frame goes, like length and height, he's one of the biggest that I've ever seen. But moving through the river again with confidence, that's just not because there are a few bears around, but that's just what he does all the time. Pretty yeah. much. As he walks downstream, this will, uh, we'll see, I predict that uh, 128 and 89 will get out of his way unless he cuts into the, cuts to either bank uh, pretty soon. Maybe that's what he's doing. He might be going out of frame here. Or he may or just want to assert his status. Well, an added bonus away. And these bears know each other individually through their, not only I think through eyesight, but also through their sense of smell. Probably each bear has a, a certain odor to them that, that other bears can recognize over time. So 128 walking away, clearly did not want to be close to 856. 89, he's like, ah, is this, what's this big guy doing? Is he gonna come in my direction? Six usually ignores 89, but 89's... Hmm. Yeah, so you can see 89 now turning away. That's just an avoidance thing. 89 doesn't want to have anything to do with 856, and that's how the majority of interactions sort of play out with these, these big guys. Um, the subordinate bear recognizes the dominance of the other one and just avoids getting into a confrontation. So they're just circling around one another. 89 trying to give you know, he's not running away, so he's just trying to give 856 the minimum amount of space right. that will allow him to stay where he is. Well, maybe it looks like a grazer might come up here on the 856 and fall. Sometimes bears are like, oh, there's an open spot for me now. Oh, it's a good spot for me. Yeah, okay. yeah so she's coming. She's uh, on the new keeping an eye on 856 while she walks up here, but. Having seen 856 walk by, you can see she's so much shorter. Right, and she's not a snow either. It's just amazing how big 856 happens to be. So I think moving to the river here in just maybe a moment, she might sit right below us, contemplate her options. For a moment. Yeah, she is. Thank you, Grazer. Looking up at the camera for a little bit of a glamour shot there. Yes. Now she has a wound on her back leg. Yeah. I don't know if you She's, caught that. If she stays still, we can maybe take a close look. She's going to yep. sit down and hide that from us. But she, yeah, she does have a wound on her left um, left uh, leg. I think that's caused by another bear. You know, when they're in a confrontation, often they want to turn and face away from the uh, the bear that they're in a in a confrontation with, because that exposes them in, in hindquarters to attack. And we often see bears in the, like on their rump. Right. I think because of that. Grazer also has some pretty prominent scars on her back, and those were from many years ago. You see those right, right in the center of her back. Those will be hard to see in the fall. They're you can use to identify her at this time of the year, but once she grows in her new coat, fur coat for the winter time, then they're not going to be able to really see those scars. 
the other thing that happens in the fall with her is she kind of grows into her ears. Right. Her fat around her neck grow into her ears so her ears look less prominent, which is a, which is a kind of funny thing because her ears are so identifiable. Otis does that too. Yes. Yeah. So Otis's ears look smaller in the fall. I think because their heads just get a little flatter. Their skulls, but overall the amount of flesh that's there. She's a bird though. Yeah. Very pretty though, easy to identify. Great, great at fishing, great at raising cubs. That's the ripples in there just a moment before the grazer because Oh yes. Because one five one moved back in there. Again, he probably get in the in the trees there, waiting for Grazer to move. And for Grazer and 856, right? Two, right? two bears he wants to stay away from. And the hierarchy isn't like, it's not like a step above one another. It's not like because Grazer is more dumb than 151 that uh, any bear that the one is more dominant with is going to be subordinate to Grazer. So it, it varies. Um, from individual to individual. And I think 151 has just had too many run-ins with Grazer to say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on my ground this time. Yeah. He just doesn't do it as we saw near the beginning of the broadcast. I, I think he has good company. Right. <laughs> A number of bears who don't want to run into Grazer very often. Yeah. So interesting. She's just sitting here. Thinking about, is it worth going in there? Bears are orient their ears in different positions, depending on what they're listening to. It also helps to communicate mood, like if they're feeling defensive or curious. And if a bear ever gives you a directed stare with its ears forward, that means it's probably very curious about what you're doing. Uh, and you may want to think about ways to make sure that it's not curious yeah. towards I've, you. I mean, another thing that when, when you're visiting here is you know, you probably will have a close encounter with a bear on a trail, and it's it's informative and important to really look at the bear and look at their ears and the signals that they're giving you, because they're giving you a lot of very clear signals, and I just saw a fish jump at the falls. Yep. And, that and there she her. goes, and she saw the fish jump yep. as well. That got her attention. Yeah. And seeing one fish jump means there are probably some others there. And uh, on the far side, as uh, Grazer fishes, ah. is the largest bear on the river, number 747. So we'll keep them both in frame. 747 coming down on the far side. So watch that path just below the rocks over there. Grazer uh, just giving the jacuzzi a, um, probably less than a minute. Now she's moving to another yeah. spot. Well, she sees 747 coming in, I think. And reconsidering fish or 747 hmm. yeah she might have wanted to try the far pool just looking around at a different spot standing up right now that's an information gathering posture that's not aggressive in that circumstance she's just looking around to try to find maybe fish in the water because it's hard to see fish when your face is right at right at the water's surface well, I kind of feel sorry for Grazer at the moment. She had an opportunity, and it's all in the timing. Seven, then 747 shows up. Well, maybe she's going to go back. Yeah, so maybe she'll circle back into the jacuzzi. 747, a giant bear. One of the largest brown bear that I have ever seen. He's certainly a 1,000-pound-plus bear at this time of the year. Super wide. Uh, head, really thick neck, very uh, deep and well filled in body. Some beat up ears though, so his ears aren't nearly as perky as they used to. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up towards the end of our broadcast, Naomi, but we're seeing a lot of bears starting the river right now. Oh, you know, who do you think this is? It's just one of those, um, it's just a young bear coming into the river now. It's two young bears. Yeah, there's two young bears downstream of us. Uh, I, this one, I should know. 
I think it starts. Uh, oh, it's in the, it, I think it's in the 200 series. But this is a young bear. I think that will perhaps uh, see trying different to fish in different places because it maybe hasn't quite learned to specialize in any one area. And also at this size, it's going to be displaced from a lot of fishing spots. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be forced to try a lot of different um, fishing techniques and, and areas. Right. And, you know, far enough away from 747 and 747 not seeming too concerned with it at the moment. But speaking of what you said about bears growing into their ears so young, there's a great example. Right. Really big prominent blonde ears on this bear. And they often keep their blonde ears into the into late summer, after, even after they shed the rest of their fur coat. I'm sure the Bear Camp fans can tell me precisely who this is, so maybe later I'll be able to check the comment. Yeah, we appreciate that yeah. from the Bear Camp fans. They're probably better at bear IDs right. than we are. Well, but there's many more of them than there are us. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Grazer down below us. I think this might be a great a great view to end our broadcast with Naomi as we're kind of wrapping up. You know, coming up, uh, you know, yesterday I asked Felicia what she's looking forward to seeing over the next week or two. What are you looking forward to seeing? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing um, more bears show up, which they are doing. And um, and it looks like more sows with cubs are, are arriving. And um, just watching the bears fish. I mean, there's just nothing better. I mean, look at what we've seen tonight. It was not a huge number of bears, but so many different kinds of behaviors, the different relationships, different fishing priorities and techniques. Um, just can't beat it. I'm looking forward to the whole season. As am I. I'm looking forward to watching how bears take advantage of opportunity. I'm looking forward to learning more about their social nature, which we get to see here at Brooks River. And I, I hope everyone wants to learn along um, with me as well. Uh, Naomi, it's been great to have you on this play-by-play -play today, so thanks for uh, being here. And uh, yeah, we'll do a few more of these this summer. I look forward to it. Right. My co-host today was park ranger Naomi Boak from Katmai National Park. My name is Mike Fitz with explore.org. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until we talk to you again, enjoy the brown bears.